Hello, BookTube, and I'm back with another list. It's uh, a continuation of my top 10 essays. And I always find 10 a, such a small number. A lonely number because it doesn't... Um, it, it's, it's almost impossible to me to distill that. There's usually a number that will fit in there and they'll always be uh, non-movable or most for the most part... And then there'll be other ones that would flow in and out. So I've had a number of people and I've bro uh, asking me to do more on the SAS. And so I, I've broken down to peer pressure of, oh, oodles and oodles of requests. Oh, five. <laughs> but anyway, um, and so I made a list here and I stopped at 30. And there's two that are questionable, like, you know, you might not say that, oh, that they're not essayists, but I'll explain those when we get to them. And there are so many other essayists, too, that I haven't read that I know about, uh, but I have never been able to find books by them. And there's one of them on here that I've just recently, it could be last year, I think, that I was made aware of that, of that this essayist, and because it sounded so good, I decided to uh, um, uh, download from Project Gutenberg uh, digital copies of some of, some of the books. Uh, and I really enjoy them. So they've made the list here, definitely. But there are others that probably as time goes on, um, you know, uh, if I can't find the books because they're sometimes forgotten or sometimes too expensive, I'll probably go for... Uh, electronic copies uh, eventually so this list like well I've I've got like four or five bookcases full of uh, of essays it's it's it, it's been a passion of mine for for decades of most of my life so uh, we'll get to it and again these are uh, in chronological order from birth date the first doesn't really need much uh, in the way of of uh, of description uh, because he's extremely well known. It's Michel de Montaigne. I know I'm probably butchering his name, but he lived from 1533 to 1592. So called the father of the sort of modern essay or the essay. That's arguable, I think. Uh, and I, I was going to put Francis Bacon on here, but he is hard work, so I decided. So he got bumped for somebody else because I wanted to keep it uh, down to 30. Uh, but there is a new, tra well, it's a newer translation by uh, M.A. Screech that's in the um, uh, Penguin, Black Penguins, uh, that is uh, e extremely, extremely good. I don't have it, but that is a translation that I want to get of his, his essays. Uh, and then we go to, and I got props here for some of the stuff. Um, we go to uh, Jonathan Swift, uh, who lived from uh, 1667 to 1745. Now, he's probably best known and still known for his um, uh, Gulliver's Travels, uh, sort of political satire. And sort of, I guess you could call it fantasy science fiction type thing. But he also was a huge writer of essays, uh, satirical essays, and a uh, complete width and breadth of sort of topics, and a lot of them humorous, satirical. There, there is a good one on on uh, f flatulence, yeah, farting. That's a really good one. Uh, and then there's another one called uh, a modest proposal, which is fabulous. It's it is he he's taken things way over the top and to the absurd to because of what was happening at the time is how to deal with the Irish you know and it's just it's farcical and but he's just taking you know what they would probably would want to do almost you know at the time but I, I won't I won't spoil it if you haven't read it uh, but I do have uh, this is uh, the uh, 11th volume of his the works and this is from 1766 it's uh, uh it's the only volume i have of this i'd love to get a complete set of his stuff and i do like this i do like the red lettering uh, on title pages and in places uh it's it's very it's very cool 
Um, sorry, I got a button broken off my shirt here, and I don't want to flash myself, you know. Yeah, don't don't want to get banned from YouTube. Uh, anyway, uh, so you'll see me sort of trying to keep that closed. Uh, but yeah, so there, there's there's a one volume that I have, and it's it's a nice uh, uh, thing. So because I made the list, and then I decided to pull stuff off the off the uh, shelves, and it wasn't the smartest thing to do. I can't read uh, while well, I'm like this. My brain's melting. Whatever the temperature is outside, which is extremely warm, it's 10 to 15 degrees higher in here. I've got the fan on full blast, as you can hear. Uh, and it feels like I'm getting wind burned from the heat uh, that's coming from it. But uh, anywho, let's continue on here. So we've got Jonathan Swift. Then there's two essayists, and I'm going to lump these two together. Joseph Addison, who lived from 1672 and died in 1719, and Richard Steele, who was born also in 1672, but died 10 years later in 1729. They were both uh, the creators of, of The Spectator, which was 1711-ish. Um, it was a daily little uh, one-sheet, broadsheet. Uh, I think it was a broadsheet. Yeah, it was fair size. Uh, and about a thousand-word essay. Um, and just on every topic, sort of things that were going on, talks in, uh, in the uh, coffee houses at the time, that sort of thing. And then, uh, you know, they, they each did other essays as well. And one of them did, I think, I can't remember whether it was Steele or, uh, or, um, oh, geez, this is Addison, that did The Tadler as well. That was similar stuff, but that was not daily. It was every uh, couple days. Um, so, uh, or was this every couple? No, wait a minute. No, this was three, The Tadler, I think, was every day or... Anyway, uh, it was it was it was either it was every day or sorry, I'm just my brain is 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 just mush. Uh, so uh, if I if I say anything out of place or get the a date wrong, I do apologize. It's uh, you know, uh, that's what the Internet is for. You can check what I said. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so uh, uh, steel Addison and steel. Then we got the next two that are ones that are con would be controversial, I think. I'm calling them essays for one reason, and I don't want to pull too much of this type of thing. They're, they're, they're letters, actually, but uh, they are what I think of essay quality. Uh, and the first one is Lady Mary Wortley Montague. She lived from 1689 to 1762. And she writes a lot of stuff about being in Turkey, the Middle East, and they are just fabulous letters. They are, to me, um, essays, you know, and you could almost uh, put in Madame de Sen, or whatever her name is, the French uh, uh, letter, letter writer who wrote a whole bunch of, of stuff too. But as I say, I don't want to go too far into that. Uh, and then the next one is uh, Lord Chesterfield, uh, his letters to his son. And Lord Chesterfield was Philip Dormer Stanhope, 4th Earl of Chesterfield. He lived from 1694 to 1773. And basically it was to his illegitimate son uh, a series of letters on how to be a gentleman. I, I love those. Uh, and like I've read them over and over over the years. And I have a well, semi-complete two or three volume set of of his letters not only just the letters to his son but this letters to his son that really are highlights for me uh then we got samuel johnson and i do have an 11 volume set and this is i'm quite peeved at this because i dropped it and broke the corner off of the book um because it's it's from 1816 is that right 1816 there's 11 volumes uh and it's a collection of his writings it's 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 definitely not going to be complete it's got his poetry and everything but he's just a, such a lovely writer uh and he he wrote uh, like i guess his best known stuff well other than the uh um uh, 
you know, Life of Johnson by Boswell, but uh, that sort of ke has kept him uh, sort of in memory. But his his uh, introductions, his essays on English poets are just fabulous. Uh, so that's he he definitely uh, ranks up there for me as well. Uh, now we go to Charles Lamb. Uh, 1775, so we jump ahead in time here quite a bit, yeah. Uh, 1775 to, uh, 1834, uh, and all sorts of, uh, stuff too. It's classed as a witty, um, essayist. Uh, he had, um, a sister that was mad, possibly, or called Mad Mary Lamb. Uh, there's actually a book, uh, about that where he... Uh, she, I think, killed a family member. I, I can't remember the full story, but he sort of got her out of an institution and interesting stuff. Uh, Thomas Carlyle thought he was just a complete non-entity, not funny, and not, not intellectual in any shape or form. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Thomas Carlyle was not a fan of his. Uh, which we'll see in a few minutes. Um, then we got William Hazlitt, uh, who I really do like, uh, and that was mentioned uh, in comments as well. And so, yeah, so he definitely um, deserves a place. Uh, 1778 to 1830. Uh, there's so many. He, he is well known. He's still uh, uh, in print, like Charles Lamb. There's a, there's a penguin collection, and uh, William Hazlitt, there's a penguin collection. Uh, Lee Hunt, though, who is next, 1784 to 1859, is sort of less well-known today. He was a poet, but also a publisher. He did a, uh, a, a newspaper, or sort of, you know, a periodical um, in uh, sort of the early 1800s and just wrote a lot of good stuff. Like, he is a, a, a fabulous essay writer, uh, but... Again, I don't think there's, uh, like, he's, he's missing from the, um, 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 penguin, the penguin, um, sort of black penguins. And he's, like, you know, he was, he was, he was sort of, uh, there was, there was a rivalry be between sort of the London-based poets and all that, and then the northern-based poets, and um, it's sort of interesting to see this dichotomy back and forth. Uh, but anyway, then we go to Thomas Carlyle, who was one of, like, you know, one of the intellectuals, so-called, of the 19th century. And uh, his essays, like on writers, uh, every, uh, you know, um, are, are, are just fabulous. And, you know, he wrote... Uh, uh, the, the uh, like basically it's a big essay on uh, the French Revolution and uh, the Dutch oh was it Frederick the Great or something like that uh, uh, and all sorts all sorts of but his essays are really good I've got four volumes of his essays and as I say a lot of them are literary style and a lot of these do deal with literary uh, subjects but then they do uh, you know spread out into other areas as well. Uh, then we've got Ralph Waldo Emerson, who really, really probably doesn't need much of a introduction. Uh, American writer, 1803 to 1882, uh, just another transcendentalist type uh, writing, but really good essays. And then follow him up with Henry David Thoreau, 1817 to 1862. Again, don't really need um, an introduction. The next one is sort of forgotten, but, you know, it, it comes from a long line of, of a family, uh, you know, e even an astronomer. Uh, is James Russell Lowe, 1819 to 1821. Now, I've got, I couldn't find the third one. There's, um, it, the, the one that I like the best, the standalone, is um, called uh, My Study Window, I think it is. And it's sort of and in this this theme comes up uh, in, in a number of uh, of essayists of looking out the window and stuff like this, and you know, seeing the world and writing about what they see. Quotation marks. Uh, but he's also known for the Big Low Papers, which are letters, uh, 
sometimes like a bit satirical, political, uh, to do with the Mexican War. Um, I'm not sure what the second series uh, is to do with. There's there's poetry as well. Um, but they, they they're they're a bit difficult because you need to know the context of what they're dealing with. But his other essays, like here here's one is just essays. Now we've got Shakespeare, uh, Milton, Wordsworth, Keats, Lessing, Rousseau, and the Sentimentalists. Uh, and they're all like he's. I, I really, really, really like his style of writing. Uh, but again, he's he's sort of unknown. And I haven't read everything. There's a big set that I've seen, like 20-some volumes of, uh, of his works I'd love to get. Uh, another one, Matthew Arnold, 1822 to 1888. Another literary critic, uh, but just fabulous, uh, you know, pro stylist, I think. And I really like, don't agree with everything he, 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 he writes about his literary uh, style, but it is it is fabulous. Uh uh, then we got Leslie Stevens, uh, who was actually one of the editors at uh, the beginning of of this set here. Uh, not this set specifically, because this is the second or third edition, uh, but the original edition. This is the national the national biography, the English national biography, uh, and he's done a fabulous uh, many essays. But there's a collection of four volumes called Hours in the Library. Hence, I stole the name from my hours in my library from him. And he talks about authors. And it's just, his pro style is so great. And he had a, you know, he sired a famous daughter as well, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, and then we got Henry Dobson. Um, sorry. Lost my place here. Henry Austin Dobson. 1840 to 1922 his main thing is there's three volumes called 18th century vignettes and um it, the first series is quite fabulous uh you know he's got like an essay called an old london bookseller about uh, john newbury of saint paul's uh and he'll he'll talk about Steele's letters uh, that's uh, Richard Steele. Uh, there's there's just some fabulous stuff uh, throughout this, but they're all sort of you know 18th century uh, people. Uh, uh, let's see here, Gray's Library, um, Goldsmith, uh, Oliver Goldsmith's Library, uh, all sorts of stuff. And and my third volume here of this is quite interesting. Because it is, it must be up here, sorry. Yes, it's signed by him, but it's to Lord Stewsburg, I think, with the kind, uh, with, with the kind regards of Austin Dobson. If you can see that, it seems to be all blurred, but oh well. Uh, but yeah, it's the third series, and uh, again, they got, you know, um, so-and-so's library, you know. Um, yeah, just, just, just fabulous little essays, and a really good writer as well. That's, he's one that's probably uh, quite unknown. Um And then we got uh, George uh, Saintsbury. Uh, full name is George Edward Bateman Saintsbury, 1845 to 1933. Now, he, he was a literary guy, and he's written um, some really great histories of English literature and literature itself, even French literature and European literature. This is a really nice volume. You can't see it there. <laughs> Uh, it is uh, prefaces and essays, and this was published in 1933, and there he is there, uh, the late George Sainsbury, I think it was put together by his son, yeah, Christopher Sainsbury. 
and he's got you know a whole bunch of introductions to fielding he did a he did a whole series uh i mean a, a set of fielding and then he's got smollett stern uh, miss austin um edgar Allan poe uh, walter pater balzac he he sort of did um there there's a series uh it was published by a number of uh publishers dent did uh, a series uh, of them as well uh they were they were uh translated mostly by I, I forget the women's names cole maybe one of them um amy at the dusty bookshelf has a set that that this is in and i believe the, the uh the prefaces are by uh george saintsbury or they might be missing from that set because that would have been um, you know copyrighted to the uh, uh, previous ones but he's a very very good pro stylist again more or less a forgotten author or as mark and i at uh, book time and elvis would say a misplaced author uh then we've got robert louis stevenson um and i've got a number of collections men and books uh, is a good one. Uh, when did he live? Uh, 1850 to 1894. And this is from 1899, Chattel Windus. So it would have been a nice, complete set, I think. And this one has a number of... Is it preface by way? But, like, Victor Hugo's romances. Um, and it's just... They're, they're fabulous. Some aspects of Robert Burns... Uh, Walt Whitman, Henry David Thoreau, Francis Villion, uh, Charles of Orleans, Samuel Pepys, John Knox, and women. Uh, but some of his more, I guess you would say, um, um, less, less, I guess, literary ones. Uh, is like here, uh, in this one here, uh, Memories and Portraits. Uh, the Foreigner at Home, some college memories, uh, a college magazine. Uh, talk and Talkers, uh, first paper, second paper. Character of Dogs is a fabulous, fabulous essay. Uh, a Gossip on the Novel, a novel of Dumas's. It's just fabulous stuff, and he also did one called uh, "The Art of Writing," and we'll, we'll, that'll come up uh, as well as another title for somebody else. And it basically is on some technical elements of style and literature, the uh, morality of the profession of letters, books which have influenced me, a note on realism, the first book, Treasure Island, my first book, Treasure Island. That I think is reprinted in the uh both well definitely in the uh uh penguin edition and possibly the i'm pretty sure yeah it's 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 in the oxford uh, world classic as well uh and the genius of the master of ballantry and preface to the master of ballantry so some fabulous essays by him and he wrote a lot more than that uh he wasn't just a um uh, a novelist uh, one I don't have any books of, and it was thanks to Amy at the Dusty Bookshelf uh, that uh, alerted me to this writer. I'd never heard of her before, an American uh, writer called Agnes Replier. She lived from 1855 to 1950, so she was like 95 years old, and she's got a huge list of books. But I, I've just never come across her before, and I never heard of her until then. And Amy read a few essays. Well, I gotta, I gotta read some. So I've downloaded uh, from Project Gutenberg a number of her books, and she is fabulous, uh, just absolutely wonderful. And she just, it, it's funny because she just like, it, it's like shotgun fire. She, she shoots off names and stuff that you know, it's if 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 you're not familiar with them, you'll be, you know, scrambling looking them up uh, because, you know. The, the, her kind of audience, the people would have read these these people, but they no longer read them these days. Uh, and then the next one uh, is uh, Jerome K. Jerome. Jerome Kapla Jerome, 1859 to 1927. 
Uh, probably most famous and really only known for, for uh, Three Men in a Boat. Uh, really. Uh, uh, Mark at uh, uh, Book Time with Elvis's uh, favorite book. It's fabulous. I, I love it as well. But he, he was an essayist too and, he, and he's, he's got two books. It's like, oh, well, he's done a lot, but uh, the one that I like, one of the, well, probably the best of his um, for essays is Idle Thoughts of an Idle Fellow. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's about how to, like, you know, you, you, you when you're at work, you can't just be idle. It, it takes talent and it takes work to, to, to be idle. You can't just, you know, lay around and that's it. You have to work at it. It's, it's a talent to, to, you know, perfect. Uh, and then there's a more thoughts of an idle fellow, uh, and a number of other ones. Um, how did I pull that off? Uh, one I, oh, there it is. There. Uh, there's one that I, I book that I really really like, um, and I, I do read it over and over. I, I've, I've probably read it five or six times. And here's another example of something like this is from a college window by A.C. Benson. Um, do I have his full name? It's Albert Charles, is it? Uh, Benson, eighteen sixty two to nineteen twenty five. He was part of a Benson family. Uh, there's E.C. Benson who wrote the Map and Lucia series and a bunch of ghost stories. He even wrote some ghost stories. And he had, they had a brother, a Monsignor Benson, that wrote some ghost stories as well. Uh, a sister who was actually an Egyptologist. Uh, an interesting family. He's like he's got like a, a diary that he kept for like I don't know how many millions and millions of words. It's a huge diary. I don't think it's ever been published. Um, they all had. They never had any children. I don't think they never married because they all had uh, a, a mental illness, uh, and I don't think they, they they made a conscious effort. They didn't want to pass it on because their parents were, I think, as well. I. I I might be wrong with that, but there's the things that I sort of uh, do know. Um, and this, this is just a fabulous uh, collection of essays. Uh, the Point of View on Growing Older, Books, Sociabilities, Conversation, Beauty, Art, Egotism, Education, Authorship, The Criticism of Others, Priests, Ambition, The Simple Life, Game, Spiritualism, Habits, and Religion. Uh, they're just, it's just absolutely fabulous just absolutely fabulous um, and uh, I, I do read it over and over uh, as as I've said um, another one uh, probably mostly forgotten today is Arthur Quiller Couch 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 um, uh, best known as Q now, as I say, there's he's done on the art of reading and on the art of writing, and just excellent essays. Uh, and then another one here from a Cornish window. Uh, I didn't say when he was born, 1863 to 1944. Uh, it's just yeah, it's just it's absolutely fabulous uh, stuff. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm conscious of the time here. I'm now getting up to 30 minutes, so I need to try to speed through this. Uh, sorry, uh, this is not working out it's where I'm piling stuff because it wants to slide. They are not permanent piles. Uh, A. Edward Newton, Alfred Edward Newton, 1864 to 1940. Uh, he was a big uh, book collector, uh, and uh, his house was Oak Knoll, uh, which lent its name to Oak Knoll Books. Um, but he wrote a whole series of books, uh, well, actually published them, but they were done as essays about his collecting and his passions of certain writers. And I've read uh, most of his books. Uh, again, Amy at the Dusty Bookshelf. Uh, we read a number, at least one of their books, like alternating chapters uh, at one point. Just fabulous stuff about collecting. Uh, then we got uh, Compton Mackenzie, or Edward Montague Compton Mackenzie, uh, was a Scottish writer. And this is just a 
a fabulous collection, Unconsidered Trifles, uh, 1932. And um, these were uh, uh, written are from The Times magazine. But it's like a memory, grand old men of literature, uh, what the public wants, bygone summers, musical comedy, the lecture rush, Siamese cats, and some islands. Just fabulous stuff. Beards, yes. Uh, Epicures, birds on my island, Adam's rib. Uh, adventures with food. What women have taught me. Thoughts of Cornwall in uh, absence. Uh, poetry and the modern novel. Just, just absolutely fabulous stuff. Uh, let's see here. Nearing the end, uh, T.S. Eliot, uh, which is uh, a poet, and I really enjoy his stuff. So this is uh, volume one, I think, of eight of his uh, complete prose uh, that was published recently. Uh, it's John Hopkins University uh, Press, but in, in conjunction with Faber and Faber. Uh, this was done in 19, uh, 2021. And it's just, they're chronological and like the defects of uh, Kipling. Uh, I have not read even a, a, like a small portion of his, but the, uh, the amounts that I've read, or the, the, the essays that I've read, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. And I like his poetry as well. Uh, and there's this collection, I think it's eight volumes. Uh, and they're working through his letters. They're up to volume eight or nine or ten now, maybe, uh, with uh, from Faber and Faber, uh, Princeton, I think, is or is it Hopkins in the states that is putting it out? And then there's complete annotated uh, collection of his poetry as well, which is which is absolutely fabulous. Um, let's see what's next. Uh, Virginia Woolf. Um, she's the daughter of, as I said here, uh, Leslie Stevens. Uh, she lived from, uh, oh, I didn't say T.S. Uh, Eliot uh, was 1888 to 1965. Uh, so we're getting close to uh, the 20th century again. Uh, but Virginia Woolf, 1892 to 1941. Now, she is a fabulous writer of fiction, but she's written a lot of essays, uh, book reviews, uh, it's it, like there's a collection of essays that is I think the Oxford University, uh, the Oxford World Classics, uh, just fabulous uh, prose writer. Uh, uh, one on film that's very interesting. She talks about going to see some silent films, uh, which which I really enjoy. It's a little, uh, her stuff is dense. That's I would say. So it's not something you just rattle off reading very quickly. Uh, and then we've got um, uh, Aldous uh, Huxley, uh, Aldous uh, Leonard Huxley, 1894 to 1963. And I've got uh, six volumes of his complete essays. This is volume three, actually, <laughs> for some reason I picked up. Uh, but he's, you know, he's known for Brave New World and just on and on and on. Uh, but there's literary essays uh, like letter writing. Art and Propaganda, Too Many Books. Oh, I should take a look at that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, just a, a fabulous writer. As I say, I'm not going to go too much detail now because I'm, I'm getting kind of uh, uh, late here. Um, W.H. Auden, uh, 1907. No, yeah, we're in the 20th century now. 1907 to 1923. Uh, oh, I got 1923. That's wrong. Um uh, Oh, I'm not sure when he uh, should say in here. Um, anyway, uh, he was born in 1907. Let's put it that way. Um, could be 1973. I'm not sure. Uh, but here is it's a collection of complete works of uh, Faber and Faber did some Princeton. Uh, I, this is volume two. I didn't bring out volume one because I don't have a dust jacket for it. Um, the three, three of his, uh, well, to complete the set, as far as I know it's complete, is uh, three volumes of poetry 
that have just recently been published this year. But again, he's 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 like T. S. Eliot and W. A. Uh, uh, Aldous Huxley in the sense of a lot of um, literary essays and just yeah, again, fabulous stuff. Now the last one, the thirtieth author, uh, was oh, we come right up to the twenties, nineteen twenty four uh, to nineteen fifty seven. That's James Baldwin. Now I've got a. Um, I've uh, like I, I read it when I got it. It was a nice gift from uh, one of my subscribers, and it's, it's something that I've wanted to read his essays for a long time. And I've only read smattering of pieces of it, and I've read most of that volume. And it's just he's a he, he's a fabulous, fabulous writer. Um, I like his fiction, uh, but I think I like his his essays better than his fiction. Um, yeah, so that there um, is 30 more dead essayists. They're all dead. Uh, and as I say, I could continue on with this, but they'd be sort of like, these are ones that, that to me come to mind. And that's what I was saying when I made the list. These are all ones that popped out so I can make the list. So anyway, that's 37 minutes almost, uh, BookTube. So I figured I'd... Uh, I, I spent a little more than a minute on each essayist. Um, so, and that really doesn't give them justice. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Or at least the five that asked me. <laughs> Everybody else is probably tuned out by now. Take care, BookTube.